What's up, guys? Hey, everybody. I'm Ashley Drummonds. Michael Drummonds. This is episode number one. Super excited about this. We are here in Santa Barbara at the Sandbox. The Sandbox. It's a super awesome co-working space, and they're giving us this cute, cozy little nook right here to record this podcast number one for you. So what a great experience. Yeah, we tried out a few co-working spaces, and so far this is the best one, we think. Yeah, they give us coffee... Awesome water. They got all kinds of fun stuff out there. There's a, what, what are they called? Airstreams? Airstream inside as a conference room. So there's actually this big metal RV inside this co working space that you can rent out for a conference room and it's really cool and cozy. Yeah. Co working at its yeah. finest. The sandbox. Check it out. All right. So we were brainstorming. This is our, technically, this is like a test podcast episode mm -hmm. so we then were like what can we talk about on episode number one and since we just got here we just are now finally getting settled from the journey from tampa florida driving cross country to from tampa. santa barbara california it was like a solid week of driving of me following her yeah in my car i drive a very old like 1996 <laughs> toyota camry and she with, drives, a missing huff -cap. with a missing with a missing and she drives a uh, nicer lexus suv and so we literally loaded our cars up to the absolute fullest yeah. like to the point where you can't see out the back windows and just followed each other it's all still the car's still packed full mm -hmm. except for the two front seats and bear those of you bear. who follow on instagram you know the bear babe He's posted every day. He was in the passenger seat. He was a trooper, though. Yeah, he's he's a really great car rider, also. He falls asleep all the time. For those of you who don't know who Bear is, he is a Lasso Oxo Shih Tzu mix. And My he child. is Ashley's little baby. So we call him the Bear Babe. You know, with him, I tell him this all the time. Like, I am not a single child mom, but I'm a single pup mom. I don't know how you single moms do it. It's a lot. It's a lot, and at least, like, with a dog, you can walk away and leave him at home and, like, get your stuff done and record podcasts. Like, I don't have, like, a screaming child in the corner, but, man, I had a few emotional moments that I was just, like, ready to lose it because the dog needed me. And, yeah, I commend all you working moms, single moms. Man, God bless you. Yeah, even on the drive out here, I'm taking turns of, like, at every gas station, having to, like, oh, you gotta go to the bathroom? I'll wash him. You go to the bathroom, and then it's my turn, and then... Yeah. And him just hopping in the car, covered in filth, no matter where you are, so. He looked like a trailer park kid. <laughs> yeah. With dirty, he's white, his paws were black, because the gas stations were so gross and so dirty. Yeah, so that's our little um, cross-country family that we brought out here, with yeah. us and the Bear Babe. So that gives you a mental image of what we just went through, like a week of driving out here. But yeah, so this is number one, and in that theme, we were wanting to do a little discussion about why we even did it like every time mm -hmm. we meet somebody new out here in santa barbara first they're like oh my god you guys are brother and sister how sweet but then they're like wait why did why did you come to santa barbara do you know people no do you have a job here no everything's online well why so we figured this would be a great topic to just talk about like completely getting uncomfortable taking a risk michael's brand effing going for it i think go for it Follow us on Instagram. You know? So he can lead into that. Like, for mm -hmm. you, being in Tampa, and I mean, our stories are pretty similar, but the main thing of this is, like, I think so many people, in, <clears throat> just in general, whether it's a business, it's career, it's school, it's relationships, I think people get really comfortable and so comfortable to the point where you no longer know how to take risks, that the fear of jumping and diving into the unknown is almost paralyzing. Yeah, and I think another thing too, we'll have to give a little bit more of our backstory here. Um, Oprah talks about this a lot, and we just listened to a podcast of Oprah and Elizabeth Gilbert, and there's almost this sense of if you had stayed where you were, you felt like you would have sort of lost a part of yourself in that, and it gets to the point where it becomes more uncomfortable to stay than it is to go. Mm. And um, the act of leaving almost becomes an act of survival, it almost feels like. So I think we were both kind of getting to the point where that, where we felt like... Um, I always like to think of it as sort of, if you've ever read the book, Oh, The Places You'll Go, the Dr. Seuss book, which everyone has read. It's a huge There's a book. part in the book um, where he talks about the waiting place. And it kind of felt like we were stuck in that waiting place back home where we were in Tampa, where everyone was just sort of waiting for something to happen. And that's not really our personality. Our personality is to kind of like, go for it. Do stuff, um, yeah. Make things happen for you. So, um, There's I also think, yeah, we, we got to the point where we were like, we need to do something. 
our dad also has a really great quote that always stuck with me. He used to tell me when I was younger, like 15, 16, anytime I was like, I hate my job. I can't believe, like, I'm so underpaid and all this stuff. And he would always come to me and I'm like, dad, what do I do? And I mean, we have great parents, but fortunately in certain situations, they always encouraged us like, what do you think you should do? Like they kind of forced self thought and self awareness in some ways. Um, but he would always say, he was like, when the pain to stay is greater than the pain to leave, that's when you know. And that's, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of how Tampa got, nothing wrong with Tampa, it's our hometown, but mm -hmm. that's kind of how it got where it felt more uncomfortable staying than it was diving into the unknown and trying something new. It's kind of like when you get that calling or you get that, your gut instinct is telling you, like it just plants, it plants that little seed or idea or thought of like, hmm, I wonder. Once it's there, it's almost more painful for you to try and pretend like that thought never happened than to kind of go down that curious path of, but I wonder if I listened and if I followed, Yeah. what opportunities, what people, what is waiting for me on the other side? Yeah, totally. And then uh, we should probably give a little bit of backstory of um, what, like why we came out here and all that kind of stuff too, of like sort of what we've been through and also the the fact that we're, we were sort of at a point where we felt like, I guess for me anyways, felt like I had nothing to lose. Right. And that no, feeling bigger than the environment that you were living in and following that feeling versus trying to settle and sort of convince yourself that, you know, I think a lot of people let go of their dreams and sort of convince themselves that like, oh, this is what I want. When deep down, it's not really what they wanted. They've just yeah. sort of bought into it. Um, and I don't think either of us have ever been the kind of people to really... Um, it's intolerable to buy into that um, kind of settlement. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, to th so talking about the backstory, 2017 was a Ooh. rough year. Every day. Oh I my mean, gosh. from like a beginning to like it's the middle of summer of 2017. And you just get to that point, And I think everybody has been had those years or a year or time in your life where you're just like, when is this going to be over? Like, I am so over all the crap that keeps happening. And I think last year was that year for a lot of people. Yeah. There was a lot of people. Um, just, it seems like everyone had a really difficult year. But it also seems like part of the trajectory for everyone going through such a difficult time was this almost like, it feels like globally everyone is kind mm -hmm. of having to take the time to go inward and sort of reconnect with themselves and figure out who they are, what they want, what they came here to do kind of thing. Um, and it feels like last year was just sort of that catalyst that shifted everyone into that of just sort of this like bringing everything to the surface now it's your job to do something with it um and it was yeah not easy but well <laughs> necessary and I, I think that that's the important thing is i think when you have those times in your life when you're going through that one one of the things we always talk about is like it's so important to allow yourself to feel it and go through mm -hmm. it not to numb it not to pretend like everything is fine and life is just dandy you've got it all figured out no i'm pretty sure there was more moments in 2017 of crying and being angry and being frustrated, literally having no idea what was ha like, why is this happening and why, I mean, I'm talking like friendships ending, relationships ending, business things not working out, career things not working out, like health things happening, like a lot of stuff going on where you eventually get to the point where you have to totally surrender and just commit and trust to the fact that like, you know what, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to feel it because there's always, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There's always a way to get through it and get out of it. But in order to truly feel every part of life, you have to allow yourself to feel both the lows and the highs. And I think that's a good um, starting point for probably the first question that we um, talked a lot about this past year of when do you know when to keep pushing and plow through it? And when do you mm -hmm. know when to surrender and let it go and see it as sort of like, maybe this isn't the right path because that you, especially when you're paying attention to what's going on with all these, like, if you're signed up for a lot of self-help things or whatever, you get these kind of mixed feelings of like, well, gosh, everyone on one side is telling me to surrender and that these um, serendipitous things should be happening and all these synchronicities and it should be in the flow and be easy. But the other side is saying when you've hit a wall, you keep pushing through it and you keep plowing through it and you just keep going and going. Um, and it felt like this past year, there was a lot of sort of like confusion of what do you do? Do you do this or do that? And we were asking, well, I was asking you that a lot too, of how do you feel about this and how do you know? And it seemed like that was a, um, a question that kept getting brought up a lot this past year. And I felt like, yeah, it was a big learning curve of what yeah. to do with that and how to 
really, at least for me anyways, the lesson of getting really still with yourself and um, feeling it all. Like, it right. seemed like the key out of it was to feel everything fully. And then what you're surrendering isn't so much the dreams or anything like that. You're surrendering the feelings. You're surrendering the feelings of frustration, the feelings yeah. of blocks and stuff like that. And then what's left is what what you need. You, you're sort of clearing the path here. You're not clearing it outside of you. I Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I think with that, because, I mean, that question comes up a lot just in general of any area in your life of how do you know when you find another way, you just keep working? Or how do you know when life is like, God, will you please stop? Like, no, yeah. this is not working out. And I think the conversations we had had was basically when you have literally done everything on your side that you possibly can. And I mean, we all know, we all know if we're slacking off or if you're like, no, I literally have turned every stone, used every contact, like given it all I've got. If it's still like just not budging, I think that's the moment of surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender is not doing one thing and then being like, all right, well that didn't work. I guess it's just not meant to be. No, surrender is doing everything in your power to move in the direction of your dreams or in the life that you want. And then after that, when there's nothing left for you to do in your control, that's when you let go, you let life take on. And I mean, yeah, you just feel it and you deal with the frustrations and the ups and downs. I think it's also important too, though, that some days you really do feel like you're quitting and giving up. And it's important to allow yourself to have those days as well, especially if you're a very ambitious, self-motivated, you're a hard worker like us and like a lot of people that listen to podcasts and watch videos. You work so hard all the time that I think it's important to give yourself the permission. If you have a day where you're like, I just, I can't, I know that there's some things that I can do today, but right now, like my soul is just done. That's okay. Like listen to that too, because when you listen to that and you let that wave happen, light always comes at the end of the tunnel and then you get your new surge and then you're able to feel that next emotion that comes in. And I think there's a lot of analogies about that too. Like it's like a water faucet. If you cut off that one emotion, you're just like basically building up this dam of other emotions as opposed to just like, just keep letting them flow because after that one, happiness is going to come and then sadness and then something else. So yeah, just totally letting yourself feel everything because a lot of times the frustration you're feeling and stuff like that has nothing to do with you yeah. and you're feeling it and you just have to surrender it and let that feeling go. And that kind of opens up the space again. And when you open up that space, you get that sense of sort of grounding stillness. And then you actually, you know what you need to do all the time. Um, it's not mm. so much about direction. This was actually leading us to another topic that we were talking about the other day. Um, people have asked me of what's it feel like when you connect with spirit or your, um, your higher self or whatever. And we're talking about, it's not, it's not sort of like connecting with something that gives you clear decisions about what you should do and which way you should go. It's not like a compass that tells you, here's north, south, east, west, pick which direction. Oh, yeah. It's more yeah. just this feeling of safety and love that it doesn't matter which way you go. And from there, you make your decisions. In the same way, whenever you're going through something challenging, when you feel it fully and then you're willing to surrender it and connect with that deeper part of yourself, you're not even so much just like, it's not like these answers are coming outside of you. It's yeah. more they're coming within you, but now they're coming from a place of stability and stillness and wholeness and authenticity. Yeah, and even like to kind of reverse back to that, he's, because a lot of people have asked that too, is meditation. So what is meditation? Is it this super like, I don't know, like new agey, woo woo, metaphysical stuff? And honestly, like prior to like having my own spiritual practice and like him having his... I had the same question too, because I used to think that meditation was you had to sit in silence with your legs crossed, your fingers in that, whatever that position is called with the... Yeah, the ohm. Um, yeah, that thing. And you sat there and you were supposed to stop your thoughts until you reached silence. And I remember I did it for like a week and I just did not understand. I was like, this is not helping me. Like, if anything, this is frustrating me. This is like the worst thing I've ever done. And it like, it felt so uncomfortable. And then I think that's how everybody starts out because that's what's, mm -hmm. that's like what you see on social media and a lot of yogis are always posting about that. But so with what you're saying is meditation isn't necessarily specifically like your, how you're doing it or how you're sitting or what you're doing so much, as long as it puts you in a place where you're able to connect with source, with God, with the universe, whatever you want to call it, but that you just get to that inner voice, that inner stillness kind of. 
yeah, you're basically going home. So you're going to a place where you feel protected and safe and almost like you can't mess up because you're so unconditionally loved. And you feel that loving feeling and once you start feeling it and kind of let it take over your body, you start acting from it. And you can't ever go wrong when you act from it. So it's not even so much about the details of the decisions of what I should do here or whatever. It's sort of about plugging into this divine connection and then trusting the energy that surges through you is going to lead you wherever you need to go. And it always does every time. So By the it's way, a lot easier than you think it is. People who listen to the other podcast that happens every Thursday that, so Kendall, Kendall Boyle right. that does that with me, she always, she's like, I call you my hippie, like woo woo new age friend. I'm not a hippie, but this is the conversations we have like while we're having drinks or we're driving in the car, <laughs> driving in the car, pulling the walkie talkies out like, Hey, I just had this thought. Yeah. Like these are the conversations, but I think this is a good lead because a question that I got recently on Instagram is, and it was specifically to business. But how do you know when it is time? How do you know when it's time to start that business? How do you know when it's time to write that book? How do you know when it's time to fully dive in to going after that dream or driving cross country? So what would your answer be of how do you know when it's time? And is there a specific time that like now, this is it. This is the right time for you to do this. Right. Um, it kind of goes back to a little bit of what we said before, I guess, for me. In this situation particularly, it felt like staying, that, that at some point the scales just sort of switched when staying was suddenly way heavier than going. Oh, heavy, yeah. And it, it just sort of this teeter-totter that you just kind of go, go with. The other thing is um, that I always try to remember is whenever you're doing something or not doing something, if it starts to feel like a betrayal of yourself, it's time to switch. And oh, that's interesting. Being, yeah, um, Carolyn Miss, I think um, she's the one, how do you know whenever, if you found your purpose or not? Because you stop betraying yourself um, with what okay. you do. Okay, well, so what would be an example of somebody betraying themselves? Um, going to a dead-end job that they feel drained from every single day that they know isn't their true purpose or passion in life. Yeah. And then when they get home, they're just drained and they can't even fulfill their true purpose or passion in life because they've exhausted all of their energies and resources doing something that they didn't really want to do. Basically, if you're showing up somewhere, whether it's a relationship or a job or anything, and you feel like you have to betray a little part of yourself to plow through it, I think it's time to evaluate what's going on. Yeah, I agree. Because then you get to the point where you start to lose yourself. Yeah. You're starting to show up as somebody that's not even you anymore. You're more or less fitting your circumstances instead of being your true authentic self showing up in life as who you were meant to be. And I think that happens a lot. I think, and this goes back to like just being comfortable. I think that sometimes, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with being comfortable and content. Like we right. all have those moments and like you get to a point where you need that settling and grounding. But I think that that's important too, is when people are in that place, if you're in that place of you've been in the same job for five years, 10 years, and every day you hate it. Or it's the relationship, like maybe it's a relationship that's just literally empty. There's no connection, there's nothing, you've given it all you've got, or it's an abusive relationship, things like that. I think that's where you have to ask yourself, like outside of what's right and wrong from society's standards, what is right for you and how much longer can you deny your soul? Like you have one life to live. You have one life to show up, make an impact, be who you were meant to be, use the gifts and talents that you have, make the deep intimate connections that you have. It's up to you. Like that's where you get to the point of just like, it's the whole, you know, it's time when the pain to stay is greater than the pain to leave. Right. Also, if there is a lot of confusion and stuff, which obviously whatever you're going through, if you're feeling a lot of high stress, it can feel incredibly confusing. That was all last year for me. Um, it's actually super clear. The problem is you might get really caught into the emotional aspect of it, but if you're willing to get really quiet and really still and connect with yourself, it's actually super simple. It's, mm -hmm. it's, the answer is always clear, it's always simple, and it's always very um, absolute. Just like there, there's no more doubt around it. It just seems like, yeah, this is just what I need to do. So even if you're trying to figure it out, you can't necessarily figure it out from the level of emotional chaos that you might be going through right now. You need to kind of connect with that stillness first and then the answers will just arise out of you. You'll know because you'll be coming from a place of authenticity. Yeah, and I think it might have been Oprah who she'll she'll be here soon. She'll be here soon. Next episode. Law of Attraction. Um, I think Oprah even says it in some talk she did. She's talking about how, you know, sometimes we talk about how I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's right. 
And that's not the problem. You know exactly what to do. The problem is you don't like the answer, so you keep coming back searching because you want something else. So, like, for example, if you're, we were in Tampa, and it was, like, I remember getting, like, six months prior to it, like, something kept coming up for California. It just kept coming up. Nothing specific. I would sit in my meditation, or I would take a walk, and, like, all these little synchronicities would happen for California. And I remember having a conversation with Michael specifically, and I was like, man, I'm trying to figure out, like, what's next, just because, like, this part of life feels so heavy and just so miserable. And, like, the idea of California keeps coming up. And I told him, I was like, but that sounds exhausting. Like, I'm so emotionally exhausted right now. Like, that just, that can't be right. Like, I don't know what that is. But it kept coming up and kept, so I kept searching and searching because it was like, nope, give me something else. And I remember searching all through Tampa and just looking for a place to live and nothing felt right. And eventually, like, I thought that quote came up and it's like, yeah, deep down, you have the answer. You know what to do. But sometimes that answer puts us in a super uncomfortable, vulnerable situation. So we're like, mm, no, I'm going to go back and see if there's something a little more comfortable, something not so scary. So can you give me something that's not as risky or a little more 100% safe? And that's never what you get in life. But I can honestly say, even though it's only been, what, two weeks since we've been here in California, mm -hmm. the last two weeks I have been here, feels like a 180 from when we were in Tampa. I mean, in regards to just overall emotional well-being, um, being outside, like inspiration, starting this podcast, like it just feels so right, right now. It's not such a heavy, just mm -hmm. constant soul searching feeling. Yeah. And I think even if of what you're trying to figure out, if making that decision is really murky for you right now, eventually it will get to the point where it becomes black and white. Hopefully you don't have to get to that point because that might look like a lot of different things. It might look like losing something. It might look like getting sick. It might look like something else. But eventually your self will try to correct itself and try to put you back on the path that you came from. Because I like to think of it as a metaphor, sort of like a water hose. And every time you deny yourself, you put a kink in it mm. and you kind of slow down the flow of it. And once you start listening to yourself, the, the hose can flow fully. And that's when all the synchronicities happen. That's when all the you know, just you feel full of vibrant joy and you're just living from your higher self like that. So eventually you're, it's going to get to that point of intolerability, I feel like, and you're going to have to do something about it, but you don't want to, the more you start listening to yourself, you don't have to wait to get to that point to do something about it. Yeah. Listen to yourself now and then just trust that feeling. And then you can just stay in that flow, keep the water flowing kind of thing. And Okay, so if somebody's new, I'm just thinking of this as like some of the listeners or viewers, if somebody's brand new and they're like, hey, I've never, I don't even know like what meditation or journaling or affirmations are, mm -hmm. but I do feel like there's something pulling me or I'm meant for something bigger or I, I know what you guys are talking about of like that thought or that idea, what can they do starting today? to make that voice a little bit louder and get more clear on things. Kind of drowning out their society, drowning, drowning out parents, upbringing, relationships, things like that, just to like, here's my absolute, and finding that voice and that self to direct and guide them. Right, so I would say, imagine that you yourself pre-planned a curriculum for you being here. And what's happening is you're sort of paying attention to what everyone else is doing and you are wanting to adopt certain things from theirs and take on certain things from theirs. But the idea is that you kind of already have your own thing and it's perfect for you and it's exactly what you want and you knew that coming here. So I would start by unplugging. I would start by taking a little bit of a break from social media if you need to. Mm, yeah. Um, whatever that is for you, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, anything like that. Just sort of like get in tune, spend more time in nature, try to think of what you used to do as a little kid that used to bring you a lot of vitality and joy and try incorporating, even if it's just a small amount of your day doing that, even if it's just like artwork or it's just playing, using your imagination. You used to daydream all the time as a kid. Use your imagination to daydream rather than to stress because it's the same tool and the same magical like gift that you have. You're just using it for something that's causing you more stress when you could be using it for something that creates more joy in your life. Mm -hmm. So um, connect with nature. This is just what I do. I would connect with nature I love art, so I would start doing some art. I would unplug from things. I would make sure I got plenty of rest. And I would try to find the first sunset I could watch. <laughs> and um, Or just a creek or a river, take a hot bath if you need to. The idea is to unplug and connect with yourself. And it's not work to do that. It's actually fun to do that. Yeah. So if you give yourself permission and time to do it, 
you're going to be thanking yourself for it. But don't think of it as work necessarily, because actually what you've been doing is the work and what you're craving is the relaxation. Yeah. And I mean, like he said, like, that's what he does. The whole point is you find out what fits you and what feels right to you. So like art is where he gets that connection and he connects to himself. I get that when I'm in the gym lifting weights. I get that when I take a walk. I get that when I'm having wine and like smelling the wine or at a vineyard. So, I mean, that's the whole point of it though, is if that's not your thing, that doesn't fit your personality then don't do it, but take the time to invest in yourself and find out what does work for you. Because then every time life gets great, we're going to, life's going to get crazy again, hopefully not for a very long time, but it's going to get crazy again. And then when you've taken the time to do that and invest in yourself to find out what works, you're always, nobody can take that away. You're always going to have that space of no matter what else is going on. And I mean, fitness for me, like that's one thing. So back well, 10 years ago, almost now, getting through the divorce. That was the only thing that pu pulled me through it is I didn't know meditation at that time. I didn't know self-help at that time. Every day though, I went to the gym, I was lifting weights and that was it. That's all I had. I had no program. I had nothing, but being in that space is what connected me to myself. I felt stronger. It kind of trained my mind to be stronger. It boosted my confidence. So it's that you find the things that when every, when shit hits the fan everywhere else, what do you turn to that's healthy? Because, I mean, a lot of people escape it with drugs and alcohol and things like that. But what do you turn to that really connects you and is healthy? And you're like, no, this is my thing. Music, too. Music is huge for a lot of people, um, both scientifically and spiritually. It does a lot for you as well. So, yeah, just take that time. Figure yourself out. And I would like to clarify, when, when she says, like, what's healthy and what's unhealthy, you know it's healthy when the power comes back to you. Yeah. So, for example, working out and stuff like that, it's it's all about rediscovering your own personal power. If it's from something like an addiction or alcohol or whatever, food, you're still giving your power away. You're, you, that's still trying to get power from something outside of yourself. Whatever you're doing, that inner meditation connection, you're going to know that it is what it is because you're going to feel the power come from inside of you. So if that looks like discovering yeah. your power through working out, That's a good point. through um, art, through nature, whatever, it's going to come from inside of you, not from anything outside of you. And that's when you start to like, oh, wow, this isn't, you, you rediscover who you are and you rediscover that who you are is actually amazing and powerful and awesome and can do anything that they want and Limitless. came here for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So when you start feeling that, irregardless of whatever you're doing that's when you know that you've really connected with something because it's not about what you do it's about who you are and that's right. when you start understanding that more and more you walk away feeling better not worse yeah you walk away feeling connected not more disconnected from yourself mm -hmm. and i mean honestly like i think that that's what happens in life when you're going through hard times like that it's because you feel so lost and disconnected from who you are that life is trying to naturally put you back on your path forcing you to do things that connect you to your true purpose your authentic life things like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Same. Yeah, definitely. It's all about finding your power again, because once you find that everything, it's just sort of, you have your own safe place. And the other thing too, that's a huge lesson is learning to love yourself. And I learned this from this past year of, um, why is this so important right now? We're hearing that a lot of more like, you've got to learn self-love practice, self-love practice. Um, and what, it's great to hear that. I was going to say, but what does that mean? What does that mean? And why is it important? Um, and what does that mean exactly? It is sort of like, I love the way Louise Hay kind of talks about it. She talks about it. It's waking up every day with a deep appreciation and sense of gratitude for being yourself, for getting to live life as you that day. Yeah. And why is that so important? And I would say for me, my personal journey, I was always someone who woke up with a gratitude list and I would go down there and I'd have my friends on there and have my home and have my job, whatever, and all that on there. But when you feel like you've lost all that, how do you wake up happy? There's nothing left on your gratitude list. So, you know, the, the, that technique is great of waking up every morning and being like, or starting a gratitude when journal. Great. Yeah. And starting a gratitude journal and having all those things. But if you're not on that list, then you can lose everything that's on that list. So what happens when you do lose everything on that list and there's nothing left and then you're struggling and what, what's left, what's left? All that's left is you. So if you can develop a sense of self-love and gratitude every day for yourself, you have found something that will be on your gratitude list forever that mm -hmm. you can never lose. 
there's your joy, there's your happiness. There is the one thing that no one can take away from you, yeah. that, that solid rock. And that is why it is so important to develop a sense of self-love because that should always be, if you have gratitude lists, you need to put yourself at the top of that list because too many times you put it outside of yourself and then if you lose that, what do you have anymore? And that's when you really hit the rock bottom. But if you can hold on to that sense of love for yourself, you have something that will always be on that list and you'll always have that core of joy to connect to. Well, yeah, and I think that that goes even deeper because originally, prior to this, we were going to do a episode on owning your worth and your value, but I was like, wait, no, because that kind of is like a few episodes down the road. Let's first talk about the journey of coming out here to California and things like that, but just to segue into that, and we'll talk, we'll do a whole episode on your value and your worth in relationships, in business, in whatever you're doing, but when you're coming from a place where you have a healthy relationship with yourself where you value who you are, that's when you're showing up as like your most powerful being. So like we were sitting at a bar in here in Santa Barbara the other night and just talking to the bartender about like, are you living your passion? Mm. What's your dream? Like, this is what happens. And he's like, like at first you could tell he was super hesitant of like, um, what? Like, who are you? But then, so this guy starts diving into how he has a passion for food and he's a chef and he just loves making people happy through his creations and it's an art and it's creativity and he has an issue though with like not an issue but like he doesn't care about the money he doesn't care about the money because it's so fulfilling for him just to make the food and be creative but so then the question i was like yeah but do you feel bad charging for that and like it comes down a lot of people have this issue with their services with their business or whatever or just in a relationship settling and Owning your value starts from the very beginning with you have to first take the time to fall in love with who you are. Everything else in the world, everything else in your life is a total mirror and a reflection for the most part. It's the whole, what is this, that movie you love, uh, the wallflower one? Perks being a wallflower. Yeah, what does he say? We accept the love. We think we deserve. Yeah. You set the standard. You set the standard for what, how people treat you. You set the standard for what people pay you, for the friends you allow in, for the jobs, the business, the things that you do. So when it comes, if there's some area in your life that you feel, you're like, God, this just isn't working anymore. Like I feel so undervalued and underappreciated. Before you get angry at everybody else, you have to take the time, just like everything with yourself to say, is there somewhere in my life that I'm not valuing myself? And it's not that anybody's doing anything wrong. I am training them how to how to treat me and how to pay me and how to just be a friend or in a relationship with me. So in just kind of segueing from the whole self-love thing, when you take the time, you do have a healthy relationship with yourself. A lot of other areas in your life become very clear and a lot easier because you're not searching so much outside of yourself for that acceptance, for that love, for that connection. You're getting it every day from you, and that can't be taken away. Yeah, that's how you keep the flow open. Yeah. And I think Oprah also has um, a quote. I think it's something like, our reality is what we're willing to tolerate. Yeah. And same idea. It's just sort of, what are you, what do you think that you deserve from life? And you are not going to think that you deserve much until you learn how to fall in love with yourself. And then yeah. you're going to realize that, oh, I deserve it all kind of thing. Um, and I would say, going back to what you're saying about the bartender thing, because um, I know as a creative person, sometimes I struggle with that of, I love making a lot of creative things, but I sometimes have struggle um, accepting and receiving finances or money from that. Um, and one of the things that's sort of been shifting with my perspective is this idea that we all have our own sense of currency and maybe, you know, maybe call it the love language or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, if your currency is creative art and stuff, someone else's currency might actually be the finances. So, and both of you need each other. So I've sort of, in my head, try to visualize it as sort of like this metaphor of if I'm paying in euros and they're paying in dollar bills and we're You're just exchanging value we're just exchanging value that's all it is and it's not so much of me taking anything from them because I'm still providing my own currency mm -hmm. it's just different and it's what they need kind of thing so think of it as more of an exchange like that two people exchanging different forms of currency then it's less of a give and take right and I also think like god this is gonna like segue into so many other episodes and content but I also think that too is like when you keep that in mind of like money is just an energy source and it's just a flow and when you give value you get value back and all that that part of that is a lot of people come from a mindset of lack of just thinking but if I take money from them then 
like I'm taking from them as in like now they won't have that and then there's just not enough money like but they have two kids and they have a family it's like no that's not how there's so much money in the world there's so much love there's so much abundance there's so many opportunities that when there's constant exchange of value you're keeping things in the flow when you start to like hoard and stress and all those things with your money you're cutting it off mm -hmm. but there's a um I don't remember who said this either. There's an affirmation. The more money I spend, the more money I make. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and the whole thing behind that is it's not about being like, if you want to be a billionaire, you can be a billionaire. That's fine. But it's not about that. It's just reprogramming your mind to remember that as money goes out, it comes right back in. It's just that constant, it's that water hose thing. Mm -hmm. As creativity flows out, it flows right back in. You never, nothing ever stops. Love goes out, love comes back in. Everything just is constantly in circulation. We stop all of that, though, when we switch to a place of lack of, like, there's not enough money, there's not enough clients, there's not enough opportunities. If they take that, there's not enough for me. And no, like, you live in a limitless, abundant world. There's plenty of everything for everybody, or else we wouldn't be here. Yeah, totally. And I think for me, because sometimes I have, um, there's just so much um, weight around the word money and finances, and there's a lot of stigma about it, and I think a lot of people have old beliefs about it. I know for me. So if you have to, find a different terminology for that. Find yeah. something that helps you be more receptive to that. For money, instantly, I, I just know that I have some blocks about it and stuff like that. So I have to visualize it as something else. So for me, I, I think of it as the currency thing. Like if this was olden days or something, and creativity, for instance, was like me with my little cornfield or something, yeah. and I can just grow as much as I want and it's easy for me, but somebody else has you know, whatever else that I need, tomatoes or something like that. Yeah. I give you corn, you give me tomatoes. Really, it's just that exchange like that. Um, but sometimes I think that money, there's just a lot of loaded um, preconceived ideas and stuff. I know for a long time, I think I held on to the idea of um, uh, being spiritual. You couldn't be rich. That's a big one. I, yeah. I think a lot of people have that of like either it's either spiritual or if you're rich, like you're not a nice person. You're not a nice person. You're a selfish person. You've cut you off yourself from people. the pains of other people. You're mm -hmm. disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you give it all away kind of thing? Yeah. And then yet, yeah, but the thing is the people who say that usually are the ones that are broke. Yeah. And also it's discovering the fact that going back to the self love concept of you can't take care of anybody else if you're not, if you're not first taking care of yourself, otherwise you're just, you're giving out crumbs. You know, um, yeah. so taking care of yourself specifically in order to have the resources to help other people is when you're at your fullest. Yeah, you, he even asked me this the other day. We were like exploring Santa Barbara, and you asked me something about like why, why do I want to have my or like why do I want to be successful or something about just like what drives you? Yeah. Like why is it so important to you? And I actually like it took me a few minutes to kind of just like let that digest because I, I mean the why is like well I want to help people I want to leave a positive impact and all those things but it was like yeah but why is it so important to be so successful? And I mean that's truly what it is because the more it's the understanding that the more I have the more I have to give the more knowledge I experience the more knowledge I can give to the people that I want to help the more impact you make like the more others are going to impact everybody else's life it's just one of those things that like the impact in a lot of different levels just grows i mean we keep talking about oprah but if you think about whoever your top five mentors are they would not be making as big of an impact if they hadn't have done all these mm -hmm. things they've done over the years and not that they i mean they're still making we all still make an impact in our day-to-day -day lives but i mean that's the whole reason and the goal and the drive and the why the why behind it is because you have this deep pooling to help people on a global level. Right. And it's not, I mean, money is a result of it. The abundance is all a result and things like that. But I think that that's one of the things too, like if somebody else that struggles with the money thing is you are not doing anybody a favor by playing small in your life at all. You do more for people and inspire more people by playing big, shining your bright light, because then it empowers them to not be so scared. And also think about the fact of like, well, gosh, that person is just like me. They have the same fears and doubts and struggles. If they can do that, and I mean, are scared out of their mind, I can do that too. And I mean, with the whole journey, going back to like the beginning of this, I think that's the important thing to understand is, you know, social media does a great job of making everything look easy. There's a lot of moments driving out here that I was crying. I was crying because it was just like, I don't, I don't know what all is going to come of this. I'm all, I'm leaving friends. I, we're leaving our family. 
I don't know. I don't know what's in Santa Barbara. But, like, also just having, like, past things come up. And I think it's just important to know that no matter how successful somebody gets, no matter what you see, everybody still has the same fears. Everybody still has the same Mm -hmm. things that you deal with on a daily basis. And, I mean, that was one of the things we talked about. I was like, I wish more people would talk about the real stuff that you deal with. Right. As opposed to just like, oh, look, perfect, like, love and abundance and life is great. It's like, no, you still have the days where you're just like, what am I doing? This is a rough, <laughs> this is a rough day. I'm not, am I going to make it? I don't know. Yeah. And I think if you are feeling those things, those are the days to let yourself feel them. If they're coming to the surface feel like it. that, feel it fully and then surrender it. Just release it. Don't, don't necessarily think that when you're feeling something like that, you always have to rush or feel urgency to do something about it. Cause sometimes what you need to do is just to feel it. It's just your, your body and everything is trying to ask you to feel these things that maybe you haven't given yourself permission to feel in the past. And so letting them feel yourself, feel them fully is always the first step. Yeah. And then surrendering them. And then it's just going to, it's a wave. And then the next wave is going to come of some other feeling. And I actually, so I had this girl email me from Instagram. By the way, if you guys have any questions or have any specific topics you want, I am at Ashley Drummonds. At Michael Drummonds. Just send us a comment or a message or whatever, and we'll happily have conversations about it. But she had sent me an email, and it was a long email, and it was basically like the theme of it was she's had this passion for a long time, and she was really struggling. She, Her exact wording was, I try and stay positive, but I'm really struggling with self-doubt. And going back to all of this, it's just, she said that, and like I'm reading it, and I went back through it, and I responded to her, and I was like, hey, I got your email a couple days ago on my phone. I purposely didn't respond a couple days ago, though, because I wanted to be in front of a computer and give you my full attention and my full response. And I said, look, self-doubt is normal. Like I gave her this long, just not lecture, but like a whole... I struggle with self-doubt. Everybody has self-doubt. The whole purpose, though, and the whole goal is that you don't let that paralyze you from moving in the direction of your dreams. Feel the self-doubt. Let those thoughts be there. You can't stop that. It's just this constant, like, chatter that's going on. But let the voice that tells you you can do this and you are capable and you are strong enough and you are amazing and you are beautiful and your dreams matter, let that be the one that you hear the majority of the time. It's literally the angel and the devil, like that kind of, and nothing, not negative or bad, they're just thoughts. But let that one be the one that gets all of your attention. And when the self-doubt comes up, you can listen to it. Like, just listen, be like, oh, wait, yeah, but that's actually, that's not helping me. That's not serving me. So you can be there, I hear you. But at the same time, I also know that I'm a valuable person and I'm moving in the direction of my dreams and things like that. Because I think self-doubt is probably the most emails that I get. Yeah, I would like to add to that, too, for anyone out there who's kind of got the spiritual background of it. Um, Redefine your definition of enlightenment. Enlightenment doesn't mean that you don't have these feelings. It means you have them and you know how to love yourself through them. Yeah. So I know in the past I thought, oh, you know, I'm on my journey to enlightenment. Why am I still having these feelings or these negative thoughts or whatever? It's not about getting rid of those because those are necessary. Those are part of you being here, your experience as a human being. Yeah. You're not in a rush to, you know, if we all come from spirit and enlightenment, so don't rush yourself to get back there. Enjoy the experience of it fully, but love yourself through it. So acknowledge those thoughts, feel those thoughts, and understand that that's part of being human. We all go through them. Even the best of the best people, the most successful people, still have those thoughts. I love when I watch, like, performers and stuff like Adele, and she goes on there and they interview her, and she's like, there's not a day that I don't perform, that I don't freak out before. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I almost feel like something's wrong if I'm not freaking out before a performance. Yeah, so, like, why have I lost touch with that feel? Like, why am I not feeling that excitement or adrenaline? Yes. The difference is not being immobilized by those um, and not getting stuck in those feelings, but mm-hmm. letting... And the way you get stuck in those feelings is by denying them and trying to fight them because then you're just stuck in a war against your own feelings. If you just let them fully feel them fully they'll just pass on their own and then you move forward and you just keep going you know and you you get better at living with those feelings too and acknowledging them and then you become an ally with them and then you start to get more in touch with your intuition and you start understanding like now I'm getting this feeling and it's it's trying to tell me this thing you know and then you, you really connect with your internal guidance system so you also start to realize too that a lot of that comes like not from you like a lot of it comes Mm -hmm. from like your upbringing you're like wait that's what that kid in school used to say all the the time Mm -hmm. yeah and so then you start to identify like 
what's truth and what is just like some programming or something that happened to you that made such a huge emotional stamp that you're like, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I remember when I was five years old and I fell off the monkey bars and I was crying and it like things like that's what that is. That has nothing to do with my business or nothing to do with my job or career or my relationship. Right. That's just something from a long time ago. But to add to what he's saying, yeah, you have to have both. That's the whole balancing spectrum. And we all know people who totally have not felt both sides of that. And they're either emotionally numb or it's almost weird because you never see them get crazy excited. You, they could win the lotto and they're just, cool. Great. What? This is exciting. <laughs> is something gonna happen? Like, are you yeah. gonna do more than that? Or the opposite, like, their cat dies or their dog dies and like, yeah, yeah, let's just grab a drink. And like, and that's what happens. Like when you don't let yourself ride those waves back and forth, you think you're saving yourself of not, go I don't want to feel the lows at all. But by not feeling the moments of doubt, the moments of fear and insecurity, you also don't get to feel all the highs either. Totally. Do not deny yourself the experience of being human. And that is part of being human. That's a tweetable. That's yes. a tweetable. Tweetable moment. <laughs> Do not deny <laughs> yourself the experience, experience of being, being human. human. Totally. It's, and that's part of it. And it's just about loving yourself through it and living through that and understanding that it is all part of your little roller coaster that you chose to ride on. So. And I also want to say that it's also super important that you value the people that you allow yourself to go through that with. Because there's going to be people when you're vulnerable and like, fortunately, like, Mike and I are very close siblings. I have friends that are very close. He has friends that are very close. You have a good support system that you can just call and be like, I'm crying. What am I doing today? I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And hopefully, like, these weekly podcasts will help just reassure you that you're not alone. Other people are going through this stuff as well. I think that'll be a good one. We should do a finding your support system podcast. Finding your support system. Because I feel like that is something that, um, if you were to ask me what am I most proud of in my life, I would say my friends. I brag about them all the time. I know I'm never going to find soulmates like that again. I love them so much. And a lot of people are like... How'd you find them? <laughs> like, well, you didn't search for them. Yeah, exactly. So I think we should do a podcast about that, of kind of finding your tribe. Finding your tribe without actually searching for them. Letting your tribe find you. By becoming mm -hmm. the person in the tribe. Oh mm -hmm. man, this is getting so many ideas. I know, so I know. Your worth. I'll keep going. We'll make a lot more of these. Owning keep your going. value, owning your worth. Oh, by the way, I meant to add this at the very beginning. Again, this is episode numero uno, so there's a lot of hey. like figuring stuff out. If you watch this, or if you're listening to this, screenshot it on your phone, mm -hmm. and then tag at Michael Drummonds, and tag at Ashley Drummonds, because then it lets us know that this is helping you. It lets us know that you love it, and we'll keep it coming, because otherwise we're just talking about whatever we want to talk about. We have no idea if anybody's and listening. reach out to us. We're just people. We like talking about this stuff all day, yeah. so if you got questions for us, we get excited to answer them, so... Again, don't hesitate to reach out to people. That's another thing of um, a big lesson I would say that I always struggled with in the past was just um, ask for help. Reach out. Ask questions. People want to help you. People want to help you. Don't deny them the opportunity to help you because you're scared to ask those questions because they're there. And that's how you start to find your support system is first yeah. um, being brave enough to be vulnerable. This, yeah, this isn't about like friendships, but I remember like god five years ago i learned really quickly how few people okay so i used to think that like successful people everybody's trying to be successful and there's not enough room for it this was like a limiting belief that i had was how am i going to do this everybody's doing this if everybody's doing it how am i going to be successful if there's five million other people trying to make make fitness products and all those things and prior to shark tank happening I was working on the formulation in Riverview, Florida at our kitchen, and I remember I reached out, I emailed Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank, the real estate lady. I just like Googled Barbara, like this was way prior to even the idea of applying to Shark Tank was on there. And I reached out and I sent an email and I was like, okay, I sent the email. And I, I don't even remember what I, oh, I asked her if she could, I think I asked her like if I sent her product, if she could help me or something, something a lot more ignorance can be bliss sometimes but I sent that to her and I got a response like the next day and her response was something along the lines of hey Ashley I hope you can understand that with how busy I am I don't have the time to work with every single person's business however I, I wish you much success on your journey 
and people assume there's so many people up at the top, but don't be misled by the fact that you think everybody is going for it. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me so much because sometimes like getting what you want out of life is just showing up and following through. So with reaching out, people, there are more people who are so scared of reaching out to somebody like Barbara or a celebrity or things like that, that it doesn't happen as often as you think. So do not be afraid to reach out because the people who are putting in the effort to provide value in your life want to help. Like people who have gone through their journeys and have figured it out, they want to help and they want you to reach out. Be like, hey, so you guys talked about self-doubt. Here's what I'm struggling with specifically. Can you talk about this? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say is like, don't assume that like as soon as this podcast goes out, that all of a sudden, like every single person who listens is going to send out a message and a comment like, oh, there's just not enough space for me. There's plenty of room for you. There always is. Right. There's plenty of people who want to help. So, yeah. Yeah, and Brene Brown talks about this all the time in her books, The Power of Vulnerability and um, Gifts of Imperfection and stuff. Every one of us is looking for connection and belonging. Those are two not just desires. They're biological needs that we all have. It doesn't matter how successful you're, you are. You're not, you're not excluded from that. We all need that sense of connection and belonging. Mm -hmm. So if you want to connect with us, understand that we're not immune to also needing connection from other people yeah. and a sense of belonging and purpose. All of us have that period. So we're all on the same level in that respect. We're all kind of in this together. So don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah, even being here in Santa Barbara, not knowing anybody, uh, I have no problem telling people. I'm like, I know nobody here other than Michael. <laughs> no can, idea. Can we hang out? Like, can I have you? And people are like, oh, real. Like, people are happy to help. And if they're not, you don't want those people in your life, anyways. And that's, I think, the first step too. Of if you want to take on that role of leadership and stuff, a lot of time a leader is the first person to admit that they don't know something, mm -hmm. and. Being that gives everyone else permission to be vulnerable as well. So a lot of times it's so interesting. You go to these things and you're just like, if you're the first person to admit something, they're just like, yeah, I have no idea. And suddenly everyone's like, oh, thank God, neither do I. Yeah. I was going to have to Google that later or something. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. And then suddenly everyone's like, wow, you know, that's, that's just the first step of, and again, that comes from a place of comfortability and feeling um, establishing your own self partnership of, and, and your sense of self love of not being afraid of those moments for sure or um, being brave enough to face them but yeah all right we're coming up on an hour here yeah. so it's been an awesome first podcast because. and because this is all about authenticity I would mm -hmm. be super straightforward that at the end of every podcast episode you're gonna get ways to connect with us and ways we can help um, Michael in the description so if you would like to follow me at Michael Drubbins on Instagram. Also, I'm developing a course called Light Quill. Light Quill is another sort of community for empaths and intuitives, and it's more of the spiritual side of things. So you can also follow that as, as well at the Light Quill on Instagram, um, and the website will be up soon. So at Michael Drummonds or at Light Quill. I am at Ashley Drummonds. You can reach out if you have any questions or anything that you want help with. If you are looking to build a business similar to what I've done with Abs Protein Pancakes, Reach out to me, ashleydrummonds.com, and then also fitness stuff. It's also on there to you guys. But yeah, this has been awesome. I'm super excited. Like, we got in here, and before we hit record, I was like, this is so much fun. Yeah. I feel like we're just, like, playing, like, in the attic or something. I don't know. Totally. And I feel like with more episodes, more and more will unfold. But definitely give us more content to talk about also. So, reach out. All right. See you guys in the next episode. See you guys.